A few months ago, we bought a Polaris Razor 1000 here for Headlight Revolution to try and test out a ton of different headlight options and figure out what is actually even decent out there compared to the stock LED headlights these things came with. And I've got one of the best options to show you guys today. Today, I've got the Rigid Industries mounting system that allows you to run four total rigid dually lights up front. I'm gonna show you guys how to install it, what it looks like compared to stock. So let's get started. The first tool you're gonna to need to get this job done is a T40 Torx bit, and you can put it on a drill to make things a little easier. Starting over here in the upper right, remove this Torx screw. There's one down here, remove that. And then you're gonna to need to remove this access panel here. Set it off to the side, we won't be needing it for a little while. And we've got two screws down in here. We've got one on the left, one on the right up front. Same Torx bit, go ahead and remove those. You're gonna feel this thing start to loosen up on you, that's a good sign. And we've got these two outer ones over here again. Spoiler alert, the rigid pods are already installed over here. Now if you've got a front bumper like we've got here, where we've got this metal thing that we can mount lights to and stuff like that, uh, if you've got something like this, you're not going to be able to remove this plastic section entirely. And the nice part is you don't actually have to. If you've got a ratchet with the same T40 Torx bit, you can reach in these little square openings here. You can undo these two bolts and you're going to have enough room to pull this thing forward and access the headlights just fine. You don't need to take your bumper off. You don't need to pull any skid plates off or remove your winch if you've got one. Just follow what I'm doing here. So reach in here. And you can absolutely do this with hand tools too. I've got a cordless ratchet. It's just a little bit quicker for the video, but you can do this at home with a ratchet, no problem. So the cool part about this plastic is it's pretty flexible. So you can lift up on this fender here and you can pull forward on this little bumper here. And between those two things, you're gonna be able to access the three bolts that hold this thing on, no problem. There are T25 Torx bit. There's one in the upper right corner here. And there are two on the inside here, one on the top, one on the bottom. So go ahead and reach back there and loosen them up one at a time. And with the rigid kit, you actually don't even reuse these springs, so you can take those off too while you're here. Set this hardware off in a safe spot when you're done with it. You will need it again. You can access the bottom one by reaching up underneath the bumper. Pull the headlight out. So we've got everything we need in front of us now to get this bracket system built. This is what you're gonna get in the kit. This bracket goes down here just like so, and you'll see there are some holes, and these are slotted significantly for up and down adjustment. That's really nice because you can get these lights looking exactly the way you want them, uh, both on your vehicle and as far as like light adjustability firing down the road. You wanna make sure that your light ends up where you want it to be. The last thing you want to see on a product like this is no adjustability. So go ahead and feed the Allen hardware through. Everything's stainless steel, so I'm not really worried about anything rusting, which is really nice. Seems like the powder coat on the brackets is really nice too. Last thing we need is anything falling apart on us a year down the road, you know? So these nuts were about a 7 16 size, and I ended up using a 5 16 Allen socket to tighten the bolt up itself. I'm not going to go crazy here tightening these things down. I don't need to over tighten them or even really snug them up just yet. I'm just trying to take up slack so I can get my lights placed on here and make sure everything looks good before I go through and give everything the final tighten. Now with this bracket on here, not super tight yet. Like I said, we're, we're just snugging it up, getting everything kind of mocked up where we want it to be. We can set this aside and grab one of our rigid lights. And you've got these baggies here with your mounting hardware. And everything in here looks to be stainless too, which I like. And the way this works, 
is you take the bottom of your light, so you flip your light upside down, take this little bracket here, and it goes like this. And the mounting nuts get set inside these little channels on the back side of the light. And it's kind of fun to get them in there without the nut getting sideways and, and sitting funny on you and just know that I struggle with it too. Like if you gotta take a couple runs at it, that's okay. And we've got these Allen bolts that just feed right through the side and thread into the nut that we just installed. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. Like once you look at it, once you open this thing up and unbox it, you're gonna know what's going on. And this was a five millimeter socket. It's what I found to be the best, five millimeter hex. And once again, just like the bracket that we already assembled, we're not going crazy tight right now. That'd be a big mistake. You want this to be pretty loose, pretty adjustable, so that when you get it over to the vehicle, you can pivot your lights and get them exactly where you want them to be before you cinch them all the way down. The final step here is taking this large carriage bolt and go ahead and just feed that from the bottom of the bracket. It'll pop out just like so. At this point, with that bracket installed, and your carriage bolt sticking out the bottom. You can grab your rigid mount and get the light somewhat set in place here. At this point, you can grab your flat washer, your locking washer, and your nut. Go ahead and snug that up by hand. And now you'll kind of get an idea of what your light's gonna look like in there. At this point, you can go ahead and install the other light. It's very important at this point to keep in mind that you're not over tightening anything just yet. You wanna get this installed on your razor first, get everything dialed in, pointed down the road the way you want it, and then go back through and tighten everything down. So the instructions do say to trim two plastic standoffs on the inside here of the headlight where those two screws mounted that we originally removed. And you can do the razor blade trick that they show you. I did that on one of the standoffs on the other side and it worked just fine. Uh, I found a better way to do it. If you've got a sawzall, honestly, you can use a longer blade to, use, to uh, guide your cut. And if you do it just like I'm about to show you, it's really, really easy, it takes two seconds. This is one of the standoffs we're cutting and what they want you to do is match the bezel here with your cut. So as you can see, it comes in like this and they want you to just keep following that same line across. And that's why doing this trick is actually really, really slick because the blade actually rests in the bezel and you can just trim it like so. Just like that. Don't have to get too crazy. Do the exact same thing for this bottom one. As you can see, my blade is resting on the bezel. It makes this so easy. Now, can you do that with a razor blade? Yes, certainly. Uh, I did it on the other side just fine, but this way was just way, way easier. The moment we've all been waiting for, grab your Rigid Industries mount, take the sticker off first before you get it all installed. I made that mistake and I had a ugly white sticker looking at me as soon as I got this thing put back in there. Take your mount, bring it behind this plastic piece. Take those same three screws that we removed from the original headlights, put them right back in these same spots. Make sure they're up and down where you want them and left to right where you want them. Honestly, when you get these things out on the trail, two things are gonna happen. You're not gonna believe how much brighter they are compared to the stock headlights, but you're also gonna realize that you need to do some adjusting to get them perfect. That's totally normal. Keep the tools with you and just keep that in mind on your next adventure. Now, if you need anything else for your Polaris Ranger at all, we've got a lot of cool light bar videos coming out. We've got some cool Heretic Studios products I wanna show you guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to show them to you. Thanks for watching.